Hello everyone, this is Abhishek and I will be presenting our work on bias in private label product recommendations on e-commerce marketplaces. This is a joint work in collaboration with researchers at IIT Kharagpur and MPI SWS. An e-commerce marketplace is a platform where products and services are provided by multiple third parties. Customers increasingly turn to e-commerce platforms for their purchasing needs, whereas sellers and producers rely on them for their livelihood. In this work, we will specifically look into the Amazon marketplace. Reason being, Amazon is arguably the biggest online marketplace where more than 12 million products are being sold by 2.2 million active sellers across 30 different categories. In, furthermore, more than 200 million unique visitors visit Amazon platforms for their purchasing needs. Now, how do customers browse through such a huge product catalog? A number of algorithms, algorithmic systems are deployed on Amazon to mediate the interaction between products and customers, such as search systems, recommendation systems. Now, how do these algorithms exactly work? Often, the algorithmic details are proprietary and hence are unknown. Further, the user item interaction that helps in decision making of these algorithms are also never disclosed due to privacy and several other factors. However, given the black box nature of these algorithms, several concerns have been recently emerged about e-commerce algorithms. There are concerns that platforms can potentially manipulate these algorithms and steer customers to items that are more profitable for them. These concerns are especially important today due to several vertical integration of marketplaces such as Amazon in the functioning of the market. In general, there are several special relationships at play in the Amazon marketplace itself. These are shown in this slide. However, in this work, our focus is on Amazon's relationship with products where product can be either an Amazon private label product or a third party product. Let us spend some time in discussing what are these. Many products from third party manufacturing brands are sold on Amazon. For example, this Duracell battery. We call these products as the third-party products and their brands as third-party brands. At the same time, Amazon also manufactures its in-house private label products in certain categories to compete with these third-party brands. For example, this Amazon Basics battery. Brands like Amazon Basics are known as the Amazon private label brands. Given the Amazon marketplace is in direct competition with other manufacturing brands on its own platform, surely there are some monetary incentives for preferential treatment of its own private label products. In fact, this concern is already prevalent across the news media as well. There are numerous articles that indicate private label products are getting unfair advantages in the e-commerce marketplace to the extent that articles from reputed media houses alleged Amazon for steering customers to its own products using these algorithms. The seriousness of this, these concerns, in fact, triggered some concerns in the mind of policymakers across the globe. Amazon is facing antitrust investigations in the United States and the European Union as well. Further, the government of India has also made multiple changes to its FDI policies in e-commerce after taking some of these fairness con concerns into consideration. But except these few anecdotal evidences as the form of these news articles, there is no detailed public scrutiny of the Amazon ecosystem. Therefore, 
a study, a systematic end-to-end -end audit of the Amazon ecosystem is the need of the hour. To the best of our knowledge, this is the first attempt to systematically audit the algorithms on Amazon. Specifically, we turn our attention to the related item recommendations on Amazon. In this work, we propose a number of network-centric measures to quantify and analyze the biases toward Amazon private label products. On Amazon, the related item recommendations can be broadly divided into two categories, sponsored and organic. The sponsored recommendations shown on the product pages are basically sponsored product advertisements, while the organic recommendations are produced by considering the organic customer behaviors such as their purchasing and viewing behavior. In particular, we consider the session similarity or viewing similarity as the organic recommendation in this work. As you can see, Amazon private label products are shown in both sponsored and organic recommendations. Similarly, third-party products are also shown in both the type of recommendations. To this end, recently, a new concern has emerged on Amazon platforms where it has been observed that sponsored ads are replacing organic recommendations on Amazon product pages. That's not all. A survey held over 2,000 Amazon customers also revealed that half of the respondents did not even realize that they are being advertised on Amazon product pages. At the same time, these sponsored recommendations and ads offer a powerful option to nudge customers to corresponding set of products. Given that these sponsored recommendations are far less decoupled with the organic recommendations, the biases in the sponsored ads cannot be neglected. Therefore, in this work, we in fact turn our attention to the sponsored recommendation space for investigating and quantifying biases toward Amazon private label products. Here, a very pertinent question that comes up is why biases in sponsored recommendations are important. I will discuss this topic in detail toward the end of this talk. Before proceeding further, let us spend some time on the way we collected data for this audit study. Given the enormous product space of Amazon, it is important that we select categories where Amazon produces some private label products. In this work, we have considered battery and backpack categories on Amazon. To collect data, we created a breadth-first search crawler and seeded it with an initial product and then the related item recommendations and metadata of the products were collected. We collected over 10,000 backpacks and more than 5,000 batteries. For all these products, we also collected both organic and sponsored recommendations. We observed that out of this enormous number of products, only 161 backpacks were private labels and only 17 were only 17 batteries were private labels, which is a very small fraction in the entire product space in these categories. In the remainder of this talk, we will use the battery category to discuss the findings of our research. Next, let's take a look at the framework that we considered for auditing recommendations on Amazon. We instantiate related item recommendations as a related item network. In this network, there is a directed edge between a pair of items if one of the products is recommended on the product page of the other. Here is a simple illustration of how related item networks are created from related item recommendations. For example, there is a directed edge from product A to products B, C, and D because these three products are related item on the product page of A. We designed two different related item networks 
for the two different kind of recommendations that we collected from Amazon product pages. Sponsored related item network for sponsored recommendations and organic related item network for organic recommendations. The next question is why do we require two related item networks? The answer is that often it is difficult to quantify biases in absolute terms. However, when we are provided with an unbiased reference for comparison, bias is usually easier to establish and analyze. Therefore, assuming Amazon organic recommendations being an appropriate representation of the customer behavior, our aim here is to quantify any relative bias toward private label products in the sponsored related item network. In our work, we performed a number of experiments to investigate for the biases toward private label products. Considering the stipulated time, in this talk, I will discuss only the promotion bias and exposure bias analysis briefly. For the detailed description of the analysis, the audience can go through the camaraderie draft in the proceedings. Next, we discuss some of the findings in the promotion bias. The first surprising observation is that we found Amazon private label products get sponsored recommendations from almost half of the product space. However, the organic recommendations in, in the organic recommendations, this percentage drops to merely 15%. This indicates how Amazon private labels are not similar to many of the products as per the organic viewing pattern of customers. But in the sponsored recommendations, suddenly they are deemed related from almost half of the product space. Comparing the average in degree, we observe that while the average in degree of private label products is almost four times that of their third party counterparts, in the sponsored related item network, it is more than 50 times of the third party products, thus suggesting significant over promotion. To dive deep into these observations, we compare the integral distributions of third party and private label products in both sponsored and organic related item networks. Note that here the y axis are in log scale. Coming to the observations, our first observation in the battery category is that there is already a considerable disparity in their in degree distributions in the integral distributions of third party and private label products in the organic related item network. However, this disparity further increases significantly in the sponsored related item network. This suggests the increase in the degrees of promotion of the Amazon private labels is significantly higher in the sponsored related item networks. However, as has been shown in the network science literature, Sometimes higher in degree can also be misleading. Therefore, we intend to perform some more involved analysis on the related item networks, which brings us to the notion of exposure bias. We use the robust random sulfur model for estimating the exposure of different products on the related item networks. The steady state visit frequency of an item on the related item network is its exposure. While evaluating exposure, we also accounted for the user's propensity to follow recommendations, the long tail popularity distribution, and the way recommendations are presented on the Amazon platform. This is done so that the exposure that's, that, uh, that an item gets from being recommended from a popular item is significantly higher than what it would have gotten after being recommended from an unpopular item. Given the different related item networks, we also evaluated different exposure distortions, distributions and the KL divergence between the two 
distributions is defined as the exposure bias. Next, we observe the distortion due to sponsor recommendations for products of different brands. In this figure, we show the exposure values of different brands in the sponsored and organic recommendations. As mentioned here, the exposure of a brand is in fact the sum of the exposure of all products from that particular brand. Coming to the observations, we observe that the, in the battery category, Amazon private label brands and Duracell saw significant rise in the total exposure in the sponsored related item networks. At the same, in fact, 17 private label products accounted for nearly one fourth of the entire exposure in the sponsored related item networks. At the same time, some top brands like Power One, Generic, Panasonic also saw significant drop in their exposure due to sponsored related item networks. We saw 75% of the brands saw were being underexposed. These observations further corroborate the observations that we earlier had in the promotion bias analysis. Our analysis show that Amazon private label brands are seen to be overexposed in the sponsored related item network as compared to the organic related item networks and thus exhibiting higher exposure bias. Moreover, as mentioned earlier, we proposed a number of different network centric methods for quantifying and analyzing the biases. All the measures consistently indicated the existence of, existence of biases toward Amazon private label products. Now, a natural question which we had left earlier is that, why are biases in sponsored recommendations important? Let's try to answer it by dividing it into two broad categories. First, the obvious confusion of sponsored versus organic recommendations Secondly, the economic aspect of self-sponsorship. We acknowledge that sponsored recommendations ought to be different from the organic ones. However, the majority of these ads are competitive and they act as nudges for customers and hence can drive multiple clicks and browsing towards the corresponding products. Given the organic and sponsored recommendations are far less decoupled, they can have some significant delayed impact on the organic recommendations as well. Because metrics like click-through and browsing patterns, sales volumes, etc. are also important factor in influencing the organic recommendations. Moving to the economic aspect of sales sponsorship, when Amazon private labels and third-party products compete for the ad space, it may not always be a level playing field. Further, since Amazon is the marketplace, it can, unilater it can unilaterally reserve ad spaces without being accountable for such actions, which in return can increase the advertising cost of the remaining ad spaces as well. In fact, these concerns were explicitly raised in the U.S. Antitrust Subcommittee hearings. Thus, biases in the sponsored results should not go entirely unnoticed. And some clarity and transparency regarding the exact practices is also desirable. To summarize, as an umpire, Amazon has the control over the algorithmic systems which will decide which products to show. At the same time, as a player, Amazon is also involved in direct competition with other third-party brands. Further, as an umpire, Amazon has the control over ad space allocations and as a player, they also show and compete for ad spaces on its own platform. Thus, Amazon, the umpire, is also a player in its own marketplace. To conclude, by auditing the sponsored recommendations on Amazon, we showed 
how sponsored recommendations are being used to nudge users toward Amazon private label products. At the same time, we also acknowledge that promotion of private labels is by no means illegal. And many tech giants and even offline supermarkets also do the same. However, given the scale and reachability of e-commerce marketplaces, the way they are involved in both production and dissemination of products makes this concern even more serious. Finally, I would like to extend our acknowledgement to ERC Advanced Grant, TCS Research Fellowship, and Synerge Lab IIT Khadakpur for supporting our research. Thank you very much.